a, a great profession and a really tough business and doesn't always end with rainbows for everybody. This morning, Aaron Rodgers' future in Green Bay. Is this the end for number 12 after a loss to the Lions? What else he said after the game? Plus, there's a new sheriff in town in one Wisconsin community. See how she's breaking the glass ceiling this morning. It is a chilly start to our morning. The temperatures in the teens and low 20s. Also frosty as well. We'll look at some sunshine though this afternoon. Good morning, folks. Welcome to News 3 Now this morning on this Monday morning, January 9th. I'm Josh Breider. I'm Chris Stanford. Kelly Slipka has your first one forecast. All right, stop me if you've heard this before. A veteran Green Bay quarterback throws an interception <laughs> to end the season, and then the speculation of his retirement starts. Does it sound familiar to anybody else? It's a broken record, yeah. I think. <laughs> uh, goodness. All right, we have a lot to get to with the Packers. First, let's get to that first one forecast, Kelly. Yeah, it's a little frosty this morning. We had uh, clear skies overnight and that low-level moisture that we tend to deal with this time of the year has produced some frost, a little bit of fog. So far, the fog hasn't been too thick, and hopefully we don't get it because that sometimes has a hard time burning off uh, during the daylight hours because the sun is not that strong this time of the year. So we got 20s, some teens up to the north right now, just a little bit of light fog, no real thick fog yet, just a little bit of haze, but as mentioned, that frost is pretty thick, so allow some extra time to make sure you scrape all that off as uh, we'll see that frosty conditions this morning. Uh, temperatures in the uh, 20s, but we do have some teens in those valley locations, like Boscobel is down to 8, actually. We're at 22. The winds are calm, and that's allowing for some of that light haze to develop. It'll be chilly this morning, but warmer weather this afternoon with that south wind. All right, Kelly, thank you. Uh, to our top story this morning, the Packers' season-ending loss to the Lions. A win would have meant a playoff game or more. Instead, defeat has everyone thinking about the future, including Aaron Rodgers. First, the game, though, first half, Green Bay was moving the ball pretty well. Couldn't uh, get it into the end zone, though. They settled for three Mason Crosby field goals in the first half. Then the Lions turned it on. Uh, former Packer and current Lion Jamal Williams, he had a big game. Two running touchdowns for him. Aaron Rodgers, though, could this be his last throw for Green Bay? A fourth quarter interception as the Packers were driving with a chance to take the lead. Oh, what a loss. Uh, here is number 12 after the game. At some point, the carousel comes to a stop, and it's time to get off. And I think you, you kind of know when that is. Um, and that's what needs to be contemplated. You know, is it time? Uh, also, what's the organization doing? You know, this it's part of it as well. Um, but the competitive fire is always going to be there. I don't think that ever goes away. So Aaron Rodgers is going to take some time and let the emotions of the loss subside before making a decision. Rodgers' final words last night, I'll miss the guys, I'll miss the fans. Thank you. Hear what else he had to say last night, coming up in 30 minutes. Well, it was a storybook beginning of the game for the Buffalo Bills, the team's first game since safety DeMar Hamlin collapsed on the field last Monday. The Bills wasting no time, scoring a touchdown on the opening kickoff against the New England Patriots. All around Buffalo's Highmark Stadium Sunday, good spirits were in large supply as, family, as fans welcomed Hamlin's remarkable progress. Outside fans signed a giant get well card for the 24-year-old safety. Cheering on his teammates from his hospital bed, Hamlin tweeted game time with a photo of himself sitting up and wearing his jersey and cap. Oh, I love to see that. At 603 now, there is a new sheriff in town in Milwaukee County, and she's breaking the glass ceiling. Sheriff Danita Ball made history by becoming the first female Milwaukee County Sheriff and the first black female sheriff in Wisconsin history. She's optimistic 2023 will be different. The importance of the moment, her moment, not lost on the new sheriff. There were other people that came before me who paved the way so I can stand on this stage. Though she was just publicly sworn in, she's been on the job since October. Well, happening tonight, the Madison Plan Commission will discuss future plans for apartments at an old theater site. Back in February of 2022, we covered the permanent closure of the Market Square Theater on Odana Road after operating for 33 years. Now the Madison Plan Commission is looking at that site for brand new apartment buildings. This is part of the city's four phase fan to develop a uh, plan rather to develop for the area surrounding West Town Mall. Four bald eagles are once again flying free in Wisconsin. They were treated at the Raptor Education Group. 
Photojournalist Sydney Martin has the sights and sounds from their release. You know, it's always really exciting when we get to let them go back. Today we were able to let four go. Um, two are youngsters that were actually hatched in Sauk City. I was one of the people assigned to uh, this particular nest this year. As we monitored them over the course of the season, it became clear that uh, one of the parents had died or was missing for some reason. Toward the end, the other parent also was missing. They both had lead poisoning. Lead poisoning is all too common. It comes from lead ammunition. An eagle is a scavenger. They like to pick up dead things. And in this case, the parents apparently took it back to the nest. We have to become better stewards and uh, uh, understand that, you know, it's a, it's a real problem in our, in our environment. I've been doing these eagle releases for quite a while now and blessing them and for myself it's a very big honor to bless these wonderful eagles that give us so much. And, uh, when we put that stem on the ground we pray for our relatives and for people who have passed on and we believe that they capture that smoke on their wings and then they touch the creator's face with their wings and then they come back down to Mother Earth. And then that's why we believe that the, we have a direct connection in that way. This time of the year is a perfect time of the year to release because they're wintering, so they're not hormonal. There's not a territorial situation going on. And here at the, at the river is wonderful. It stays open, there's plenty of food, and it's a natural wintering area, so it's perfect, perfect. Eagles are just amazing. I think that, you know, introducing them to people where people can see them up close and personal is, uh, is such a joy of mine. And I always feel like, you know, the birds uh, change people. It's not um, our education programs. I mean, we try to do that, but it's the birds themselves that are, are the, uh, the changing influence. They, they touch people in a way that we can't. Look, mm -hmm. catch your future, darling. One, two, three. That is such cool that video. Is so cool. Oh, I that could watch so that cool. all day. In other news this morning, downtown Madison is the perfect place to celebrate the season with family and friends. And today is the last day that you can check out the downtown holiday celebration called Shine on Madison. The six week community event started in 2017 to increase visibility and traffic to businesses downtown. Throughout the six weeks, the event featured seasonal lighting ceremonies, a winter market and a special focus on downtown retailers, as well as enjoyment of arts and a strong sense of community. I hope I'm going to miss the lights until next season. Oh, well. Okay, so usually donuts are paired with coffee, but this weekend it was all about donuts and beer. Donut Fest making its way to Delta Beer Lab for an afternoon of fresh baked donuts and brews. A lot of local and regional donut vendors there, including Greenbush Bakery from here in Madison, uh, which makes its way, uh, the festival, uh, to 20 different cities. The event supports the Hospitality Fund, raising money for an industry making a comeback coming out of the pandemic. Every city that we go into, we look for, you know, a brewery that, you know, is unique and, you know, has a good vibe that we can, you know, have a great event and celebrate and honor donuts and beer on a great Sunday. Donut Fest welcome both guests who pre-registered online and those who showed up at the door. And for those who preferred coffee with their donuts, yeah, that was there too. I love it. All right, it's my favorite time. It is 6.08 and coming up, a new exhibit in the 6.08 celebrates the history and employees of Janesville's legendary GM plant. We're getting an inside look at the memories and memorabilia. Coming up later in sports, Badger women's hockey back at their home ice for a big series against Minnesota Duluth. At Stanton Optical, independent eye doctors are available for eye exams whenever you need one. You should have seen me before I got mine. You're so quiet. Are you mad at me? Book your free same day eye exam at Stanton Optical today. The local water experts at Culligan can take care of everything but the kitchen sink. 
Actually, we do that too. Culligan, here for every water worry. If you think about it, hash browns are the french fries of breakfast. Who says it's not french fries that are the hash browns of lunch and dinner? Mmm. That's also true. Get your favorite McDonald's breakfast today, like a sausage McMuffin and hash browns or a sausage biscuit with hash browns. Each pairing just $2.50. Nice face. Clearly you're a safe driver. You could save hundreds for safe driving with Liberty Mutual. They customize your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. <laughs> Woo! We gotta go again. <laughs> only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. When you prefer dream vacation over a rental nightmare, It matters where you stay. Hilton for the stay. What can Sono Bello do for you? How about a new shape? Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. I just put this dress on that I haven't worn in over 10 years. New confidence. I can see a huge difference. Look at this. New you. I can wear a little black dress. I feel sexy. With Sonobello, you can permanently remove stubborn fat in just one visit. Don't wait. The results I've seen achieved are truly outstanding. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation with Sonobello, America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist, and find out how you can get $250 off. Sonobello uses TriSculpt Micro Laser Liposuction to remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently for incredible transformations in just one visit. I have one big regret. I didn't go sooner. Call 1-888-622-8360 or go to sonobello.com. Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. We do the math, people. For $79, you get all this. That costs over $400 at Lens Crafters, over $200 at Walmart, and over $150 at America's Best. When it comes to value, Stanton Optical is the top bird. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. Welcome back at 612. Time to slow things down and see what's happening in the 608 this morning. We're getting an inside look at the Rock County Legacies exhibit and the latest one very special to Janesville. Photojournalist Mark Schilling takes us inside. Blackhawk Community Credit Union was born out of the Janesville GM plant in 1965. When the plant closed, the credit union felt a strong need to make sure that the memories of all of this were not lost. A lot of years in there. The exhibit that you will see when you come to visit us was developed by our curator, uh, Kara Kinzelman, put her heart and soul into making sure that this was a high quality exhibit for everyone to come and see. It is all laid out chronologically over a hundred year time frame. The Samson Tractor Company produced some very high quality outputs, but they could not compete from a price perspective. General Motors jumped in and took over uh, the Samson Tractor Company. We have video of part of the sit-down strike that um, occurred. It's very compelling. As somebody that's never been part of a labor union, I found it to be extremely interesting and I have a much greater understanding why it's important. So here we are at the end of the strikes and in the golden years of General Motors in the 1950s. We talk all about families and the generational um, impact that plant had on so many people. A great example would be the, the Glass family here, who from the beginning of operations all the way to the end of operations, there was somebody from this line, family line, that was a part of being employed with the plant. So this is the 100 millionth vehicle ever produced by General Motors for trucks, cars, everything they've ever built, assembled here in Janesville, Wisconsin. My father worked there for 40 years. He loved it. That's all he knew. It was a pride thing for him. This is some of his retirement items and some of the tools that he worked with at the plant. I got to go in and out of the plant on numerous occasions. Got to take personal tours with my father. I thought it was amazing. My dad gets to go to this big assembly plant and have fun all day. 
There is a need for this type of museum in our region here. We've just been receiving so many guests from all over the southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois area that find this really meaningful and really want more of this. So I feel it's really incumbent on us to be able to find these stories, bring this stuff to light, and demonstrate that we are the storytellers of the future. This exhibit was put together to honor the workers of GM, JATCO, UAW, and I think we've done it very well. My thanks to photojournalist Mark Schilling for putting that together while I was on vacation. Now, you have a chance to be part of this as well. One of the aspects of the project they're working to grow to maintain the legacy are actual audio recordings. They have an oral history program set up where people are invited to come in, give their first-hand experience, or that of a loved one that worked at the plant. You can simply call and make an appointment to meet with staff at Rock County Historical Society, or they'll even come to you. We'll have all of this up on channel3000.com. So much history right Right there in Janesville, Chris, and I mean, you can see it's that connection that a lot of these folks have had for generations. I'd love to see that. You know, these stories, you know, uh, need to be documented, and you got to do it before they're lost forever. Especially with how special that is, you know, you want that to be able to live on so that yeah. all the other generations are going to know exactly how special that was for Janesville and Rock County. Yeah, it's just so important to that city and community's history. It really is. All right, Josh Breider, thanks a lot. Hey, he's always looking for ideas for In the 608. Reach out to him. He's at Josh Breider TV on social media, or you can email him for a chance to be featured. It is 16 after 6 here on your Monday morning. Uh, visibility issues out there for anyone, Kelly? Not a whole lot of uh, fog issues, at least not real thick, but that just goes to show you all that low-level moisture that's just been trapped near the surface. We have high pressure and control over weather, but that air is sinking and basically trapped some of that low-level moisture. And that's why we were stuck in the clouds. You didn't have to go too far to the west or north yesterday to get that sunshine, but we did clear out overnight, and that's allowing for those temperatures to drop and is producing a little bit of light fog. And more importantly, that fog is freezing on the windshield, so you're going to have to scrape that this morning as it'll probably take a good five to ten minutes to clear that off because it's pretty thick. You want to make sure to get it off so you can see everything around you as you're driving on your way to work or school this morning. Temperatures in the teens, the low 20s across the area, quite a bit colder up to the north. Of course, they have quite a bit of snow up north as well. We don't have much at all on the ground in the Madison area. We're looking at uh, milder weather this afternoon. The winds will pick up out of the south. We're kind of stuck in this stagnant weather pattern, but there is hope for at least some warmer weather. Maybe a little bit of light snow, it looks like, by the end of the week, but right now it looks like the storm system is going to pass primarily to our south. We'll just probably squeeze out a few snow flurries. Temperatures in the 20s, but as you get toward the Wisconsin River Valley, you're seeing some single numbers there in Basketball. 13 in Lone Rock. Watertown right now at 19 degrees. Rockdale 19. Cottage Grove 19 as well. So it is a chilly start to the morning, and that's allowing for some of that frost to develop. But the unusually mild January weather pattern is going to continue. You know that cold air is just lurking up there. But right now, we don't see any signs of that uh, diving southbound anytime soon. So it looks like the uh, unusually mild January weather will continue. you got to remember, we should be around 26, 27 degrees for this time of the year for the afternoon highs. We're going to shoot potentially into the lower 40s by next week. So we'll see a few more clouds roll in during the afternoon hours. Temperatures are getting close to 40. We'll see that southerly wind up there around 5 to 10 miles. Miles per hour. A little bit more cloud cover later today through tonight. May see some fog tomorrow morning, maybe a flurry or two, but really no precipitation. Good idea to maybe get that car washed as we won't really see a whole lot of precipitation until maybe Thursday and Friday. Right now the weekend looks quiet. Maybe a rainmaker early next week. That's how warm it's going to be. Okay. Kelly Slipka, thanks a lot. Here's sports anchor Jordan Reed with your morning sports. Turn home that the Badger women's hockey team hoped for as Minnesota Duluth bested UW at Le Bon in the series opener. The Badgers looking to avoid their first sweep of the season on Sunday afternoon. And Jane Gervais is back between the pipes for Wisconsin, her first game back since the Minnesota series. And this one is all defense. Each side smothering the other, and that keeps it scoreless through two periods. Then, at a second intermission, Annika Linzer lights the lamp for the Bulldogs. That would be the lone goal in this outing. And the Badgers outshoot UMD 28-26, but fall 1-0, marking their second shutout in the week. After a tough loss in the Big Ten opener, Badger Wrestling hit the road to face Illinois. Garrett Model gets the duel started in 157. Two points for the takedown. 
and model puts Bucky on the board after a 5-1 decision. Now next up is Dean Hamity and he's looking to follow suit. He's racking up some mega near fall points and he goes on to win this one by tech fall that pushes Wisconsin's lead to eight. But the Illini battle back. Now they're only trailing by a pair of points in the 141 bout. Danny Pacino comes away with the pin and Illinois squeaks out the dub 18-17. Some big news out of Wisconsin women's basketball. The team announced Sunday afternoon that senior Sydney Hilliard is stepping away from the program for personal reasons. In the statement, Hilliard says in part, quote, this was not a decision I took lightly. Also saying the love and support of my family, friends, and Badger teammates and coaches has meant the world to me and I'll always be grateful to all of them. Now over to the action. Badger, the Badgers return to the Kohl Center Sunday for round one of the border battle, and this comes down to the final minutes of the fourth quarter. Badgers trail by two. Julie Pashpishava takes it all the way up and in two of her game high 20 and it ties it up. Well, Avery LaBarbera is going to have the final say. She dials up from distance and puts Wisconsin on top for good. They pick up their first Big Ten win of the season, beating Minnesota 81-77. Back to you. Their first conference win. 620 right now coming up and trending why beer lovers are having to pay a little more these days. In our next half hour, continuing coverage of the Packers season ending loss. Here from the quarterback coming up next. Channel 3000 Plus. Watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. Cobus and Buses, now hiring. My name is Mike Williams. I've been driving school bus off and on for 21 years. Here at our terminal, we're kind of like a family too. Somebody has an issue with a bus, other people kick in and help and get the job done. Garage doors do not like the cold weather at all. As soon as it gets cold springs, parts will burn. At Precision, we always come fully stocked. We're able to typically solve most garage door problems within a couple hours. Precision Door Service, a name you can trust. We asked people to give their honest feedback on how wrinkles around their eye area and under eye puffiness looked after trying Tint and Titan for the first time. So with foundation, normally it just kind of, you know, you just cover up and conceal things. But with Tint and Titan, it actually changes the way the skin looks. The lines are actually gone. So you don't get any of that buildup within them and the creases that you normally would see with when you wear foundation. 40s was a bit of a shocker for me because 40s, I noticed the skin under my eye is getting very loose. And then 50s hit. And I'm 54 and I really notice the difference in the firmness of my skin here and especially here. I'm glad there's products like Tint and Titan out there so that I can just put this on and not worry about what I didn't do in my 40s, my 30s, and my 20s. And it looks like I always have. It's a pleasure and it's actually a gift for anyone. Tint and Titan shrinks under eye puffiness, smooths out wrinkles and fine lines around the eye area, and provides tinted coverage to hide dark circles and skin imperfections, making you look fresh and young. Younger. Tint and Titan is the only cosmetic that blends a beautiful tinted cream to cover uneven skin tone and dark circles with silicate technology that smooths out under eye puffiness and wrinkles, making the skin around your eye area look flawless for up to eight hours. I will be turning 59 in June of this year. Using Tint and Titan, for me, I'm actually very confident right now that my wrinkles won't be as obvious. It is giving me the support that I think reminds me that I'm at my best right now. Finally, there's a tinted eye cream to cover dark circles and uneven skin tone. And since Tint and Titan works in 10 minutes and lasts up to eight hours, you can look your best without getting injections or fillers. Get beautiful, lightweight, tinted coverage, plus that smoother, younger, wrinkle-free look from years past in 10 minutes. A look that will make you feel beautiful and confident. Try it this new year for only $19.95. Plus, get free shipping and handling. Visit TintandTitan.com or call the number on your screen. Right now with Papa Murphy's, we've got a great deal. Which means I make more great pizza. Like our $9.99 XLNY pizza. It's everything you'd expect from a classic New York-style pizza, hot and fresh out of your oven. Order now at PapaMurphy's.com. Cobus and Buses, now hiring. Working with Cobus and it's definitely been great because of the flexibility. If you do need time off, they work around you. They, they definitely try to make it a company that's based for you. Visit Cobason.com to apply. 623, uh, so beer drinkers uh, have been paying more. 
uh, just like everybody else, paying more for just about everything else. Everything. Yeah, the alcohol consulting company Bump Williams says beer prices, not including sales at bars and restaurants, jumped 7% during the last 13 weeks of 2022. The firm said prices of some popular beers, including Bud Light, Miller Light, and Coors Light, increased even higher by 10% during that time. Breweries have had to raise prices due to inflation and the increased cost of shipping and ingredients. However, industry insiders say while people are generally buying less beer, higher prices are making up for it, with sales up about 2% last year. Yeah, not as many people are drinking beer these days. There uh, are so I've many options out there. On that. Yeah, and the variety is just insane. I mean, there's 500 different types of beer when you walk into the grocery store cooler. Yeah, when I was in college, there were about three. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's changed, it's, that's for sure. Yeah, it's, uh, it is. Uh, well, there you go. Prices on something else uh, going up and up and up and up and up. Okay, Kelly Slifka, we've got a little bit of ch a chill out there in the air this morning. What I want to know is when are we going to see the sun again? Well, it's we had it sunshine. on Saturday. Yesterday we got socked in with the clouds. You didn't have to go too far to the west or north and they saw the sun. Uh, very problematic this time of the year when you get that low-level moisture and you get a little bit of fog developing and you get low clouds. So far the fog hasn't been too thick, but it has produced quite a thick frost on the windshield this morning. So you're going to have to scrape that off this morning. Temperatures are in the teens in some areas, especially up to the north of west. We're the uh, 20s here uh, locally and just some light fog this morning you may have to contend with more importantly that frost is pretty thick you have to scrape that off make sure you clear it off so you can see everything around you i think we will see some sunshine this morning a few more clouds start to roll in later this afternoon as we have high pressure right now sitting overhead but that area of high pressure should be uh, moving on out a little bit later on today and that'll allow a weak system to move in and may produce a, a little bit of, of uh, cloud cover coming into this afternoon and tonight a little bit more sunshine tomorrow but then we are looking at a storm system that will approach us toward the end of the week. That may bring us some lighter snow. No big storm systems headed our way anytime soon. All right. Kelly Slicka, thanks a lot. Coming up next, we're going to hear from Aaron Rodgers on his future with the Packers. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Hi V Red Hot Deals are super hot this Monday through Thursday. Lay's potato chips, only $1.77. Banquet pot pies or fruit pies, only 98 cents. And Hy V Orange or Apple Juice, only 99 cents. Only at Hy V. Family owned Brothers Maine knows choosing appliances for a remodel or new build can be exciting and overwhelming. Our experienced staff has experienced it all as we've guided thousands of area families through appliance selection. Brothers Maine has a larger inventory and low price deals that consistently beat competitors including Big Box. You heard me, Big Box can't beat our prices. From sales to install, Brothers Maine does it all. Feel great about your purchases and feel like family at Brothers Maine. To everyone who loves great food, let us make you a meal the Wisconsin way. We cook each butter burger to order for you and the people you love, so it's the best part of your day. The best. The best. And every creamy scoop of fresh frozen custard, pure happiness. Pure happiness. Pure happiness. Because where Culver's comes from, and the heart of America's Dairyland. Our love. Our love for fresh food is as strong as our love for all of you. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to Delicious. Lake Ridge may be a new name, but it isn't a new bank. It's one built on over a century of community commitment. One equipped with all the knowledge and resources of 145 collective years of experience. Monona Bank and State Bank of Cross Plains are coming together as one. As Lake Ridge Bank, we're doing more together for you. This is me, and this was my stubborn body fat. My name's Adrian, and Sonobello changed my life. Sonobello is America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist, and they permanently removed my body fat in just one visit. After having two kids, my body, it changed a lot. I tried everything to lose the fat, but nothing seemed to work. Sonobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently on your stomach, back, chin, and more. 
I've seen such dramatic results. My tummy is gone, my double chin is gone, and my hourglass shape is back. This was the mommy makeover that I deserved. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-888-803-2714 or go to sonobello.com. Hy-Vee Red Hot Deals are super hot this Monday through Thursday. Hy-Vee Frozen Vegetables, only 68 cents. Select Lunchables or P3, four for only $5. And Sara Lee Honey Wheat or Butter Bread, only $1.49. Only at Hy-Vee. The quarterback's going to take the brunt of the blame when you, when you don't have success. Well, just like that, the Packers' winning streak and their playoff chances come to an end. We have new reaction overnight on the loss to the Lions. Plus, hundreds of riders arrested after a coup attempt in Brazil will have the new developments. Well, we've had a little bit of fog develop overnight, and it uh, has uh, produced a lot of frost. That's what you're going to have to be concerned with this morning, but we should see some sun today. Can't wait for that. All right, hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to News 3 Now this morning. I'm Chris Stanford. And I'm Josh Breider. You're welcome on that sunshine. I packed it in my carry yeah, Welcome bag. back. Back from Florida. I know you guys were stuck in the clouds for quite Most a of the bit time. last Most week. Most of the time, yeah. Yeah, Saturday we had a little sun, but yesterday, unfortunately, we were socked in with clouds. Thankfully, I think we'll see some sunshine today. It's going to be pretty chilly this morning. One thing you're going to be concerned with is some frost across the area. Temperatures right now are in the uh, teens and low 20s. Really stagnant weather pattern. And when we get high pressure overhead, you'd think it would clear us out. But sometimes it traps some of that low-level moisture near the surface. And that produces some of the fog. And yesterday we had the low clouds stuck around. But right now the fog isn't real thick in any one location. But it's enough of a haze that it is producing some of that thick frost on the windshield. Make sure you scrape that off this morning. Winds will be out of the south today. So I think we're going to see a warmer afternoon, even though it is chilly, especially in the Wisconsin River Valley. Down to 8 in Basketball. Basketball currently 22 in Madison, Watertown right now at 19. So we're at 22, uh, still looking at clear skies, a little bit of haze and frosty conditions this morning. Temperatures in the 20s, but I think with that sun and that southwest wind, should be rising through the 30s. All right, Kelly Slipka, thanks a lot. You can stay on top of the changing weather conditions by downloading the First Warn Weather app to search for WISC weather wherever you get your apps. It's free. We have some breaking news that we're following this morning. Multiple fire crews have been at a large garbage collection plant in Walworth County, uh, this fire is happening at John's Disposal Service just outside of Whitewater. Crews have been on scene for uh, several hours trying to get this thing under control. Because of the fire, the stretch of Highway U has been shut down between Fremont and Highway D. We have a crew headed to the scene there right now. We're bringing more as soon as there's something to report. Our other big story from overnight, the Green Bay Packers losing their chances at the playoffs in a close game with the Detroit Lions. The Packers holding a three-point lead through the first three quarters with one touchdown and three field goals. But in the last six minutes of the game, Detroit Lions running back Jamal Williams ran in a one-yard touchdown, sealing their fate. Packers head coach Matt LaFleur says last night's loss is not all on Aaron Rodgers. The quarterback's going to take the brunt of the blame when you when you don't have success. And a lot of the other time when you do have success, they're going to get too much of, of that praise. It takes everybody on that field. And ultimately, you know, all 11 that were out there throughout the course of the season, um, and then our, our staff, I think we got to do all collectively got to do a better job, period. The game was decided by the Packers being unable to convert fourth downs and opting for field goals, as well as a series of dropped passes, fumbles, and penalties, mainly in the first half. Heading into last night's game, the Lions had already lost their playoff chances to Seattle. The Seahawks are being hosted by the San Francisco 49ers this Saturday in the playoff wildcard round. So instead of a playoff run and another shot at a Super Bowl, now the focus of Packers fans shifts to a different future, one perhaps without Aaron Rodgers. After 18 seasons with the Packers, was this his last? Reporters asked him a few different ways after the game, and Rodgers certainly left the door open. It's a little raw right now. You know, it's just a little bit after the game, so uh, I want to take the emotion out of it and have the conversations and see where the organization's at and see how I feel after some time has passed. 
Does that not sound exactly like what he said at the end of last season? It's the same it, thing. Almost, almost the exact <laughs> same thing uh, after that loss to San Francisco. Uh, so Rogers' final words to the media last night. I'll miss the guys. I'll miss the fans. Thank you. So if last night was, in fact, Rodgers' final game in Green Bay, he would finish his career with 147 wins, 13 behind Brett Favre. 634 right now happening today. Two teens charged in a Marquette County home invasion will have their first appearance in court. 17-year-old Jace Ellsworth Mesa and Dominic Zylik are both facing one felony charge of burglary. The teens are accused of forcing their way into a home in the town of Shields last Tuesday. They demanded property from the person in the home, took several pieces of property, and injured the resident. They'll also be facing several misdemeanor charges of intentionally pointing a firearm at a person, criminal damage to property, and battery. A Chippewa Falls woman sentenced to two years of probation for assaulting three hospital workers. The Eau Claire Leader Telegram reports a 33-year-old woman was sentenced Friday after pleading no contest to a felony count of bodily harm to a health care provider. Police were called to Mayo Clinic Health System in Eau Claire July uh, after reports of a woman punching staff members attempting to take her blood pressure. Another nurse was also punched while trying to help the woman use the restroom. A second nurse was kicked after police got there. As part of her sentence, she has to undergo a mental health assessment. A Madison Metro School District event slated for next week is drawing criticism online. On January 19th, East High School will have a student-planned, family-friendly drag show. This has drawn negative attention from the libs of TikTok page and other anti-LGBTQ organizations. Amid the online criticism, East High Principal Mickey Smith said, Our Gender and Sexuality Alliance has been working hard to plan East's first annual a family-friendly drag show intended to celebrate, affirm, and support EHS students and staff in our LGBTQIA+, as well as our larger school community. Middleton High School received similar criticism last year after a teacher performed a drag show during a staff talent show. Hundreds of rioters arrested after a coup attempt in Brazil. Take a look at some of these dramatic scenes from the country yesterday when thousands of supporters of the country's far-right ex-president Jair Bolsonaro stormed the Congress, Supreme Court, and the Presidential Palace. Some of the demonstrators called for a military intervention to restore Bolsonaro to power. This just two days after the anniversary of the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Seeing the rise of populism in global democracies around the world, from the U.K. to India to Brazil to the United States to Mexico, um, and we've seen it in, in, in the past. President Biden called the situation outrageous in an assault on democracy and the peaceful transition of power. Well, take a look at this. We're viewing what is possibly one of the largest cat figurine museums in Wisconsin and maybe even in the world. Ra Sean Redner, his wife and their 10 cats run the Redner's Rescued Cat Figurine Museum in Menominee Falls. The museum features thousands of figurines from around the world and prides itself on keeping figurines around after loved ones have gone. All donations to the museum are given to local cat rescues. Since 2021, around $3,000 have been raised. The museum? Museum. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. That was a good one. <laughs> Do it again. Pretty cool, though. Uh, yeah, if you're into that sort of thing, yeah. sure. <laughs> hey, some people are. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I won't judge, but I'm, I'm sure they love it. There's something for everyone out yeah. there. All right, 637 <laughs> right now. Let's go ahead and take a live look outside. Traffic moving along just fine, but there might be some patchy fog. We do know there is frost out there, so give yourself a little extra time to clean out the car. Kelly Slifka will have your first warm forecast coming up. And after unveiling some tough new immigration rules, President Biden visits the U.S.-Mexico border. With Pick and Save Fresh Perks, it's easy to get lower than low prices for the win. Earn fuel points on every purchase and save up to a dollar a gallon at the pump. With Pick and Save Fuel Points, all you do is win big, big savings. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Garage doors don't like the cold weather, but if it breaks, Precision Garage Door is always ready. It does not matter if it's raining or snowing or any kind of other weather conditions, we're going to get it done on the same day. We know how important that is to our customers. Precision Door Service, a name you can trust. With my low energy, I can't even blow up this celebratory balloon. At Planet Fitness, there's hope. 
Now through January 12th, join Planet Fitness for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel any time, and turn your low energy into big fitness energy in 2023 in a clean and spacious, judgment-free zone with tons of equipment to get you energized. Low E, not for me. Simply join through the free PF app for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Deal ends Thursday, January 12th. Hey, are we going to fit? At American Family Insurance, we're here to carefully protect your dreams. <laughs> All right, open your eyes. <sighs> Welcome home. Bye. <All> right. <laughs> we'll see you later. Save up to 23% when you bundle your home and auto insurance today. Get a quote or find an agent at AmFam.com. American Family Insurance. There will always be bumps in the road, but we got guts, America. <clears throat> we got freedom. We got power. We got future. So let's drive on and make the future we want to see together. Because your new Ford vehicle is just the start of a journey. So stop by your Ford dealer today and choose one of the thousands of new Ford trucks and SUVs ready for delivery. We've been building this country for 119 years, but we're just getting started. Our Hillshire Farm craftsmen start the day slow roasting turkey for incredible flavor. Then double seal every slice for freshness. The results? They speak for themselves. Hillshire Farm. Made right on the farm. With the Pick and Save app, no matter where you order free pickup, you get the same great deals as you get in our stores. So start your cart today. Pick and save. Fresh for everyone. News 3 Now's call for action team gets results. We're taking action for you. Nearly 700 cases closed. More than a half million dollars recovered. And we're not finished yet. When you need help, call for action only on News 3 Now. Be prepared for winter weather. Trust the First Warn Weather Team to give you clear, timely, and accurate info. Keeping you safe and ahead of the storms. Your certified most accurate team, First Warn Weather, only on News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. President Biden visited the U.S.-Mexico border over the weekend in El Paso, Texas, after unveiling some tough new immigration rules. The border town of El Paso has seen a massive wave of migrants and asylum seekers. Christina Ruffini tells us how a change in leadership could impact lawmakers' response. Surrounded by border agents, President Biden walked along the fence separating the U.S. and Mexico. It's his first trip to the border since taking office. Moments after stepping onto a Texas tarmac, President Biden was handed a letter by the state's Republican governor, Greg Abbott. It is stunning and astonishing and outrageous that this is his first time down here. Last week, under mounting pressure from both Republicans and Democrats, the president announced new legal pathways to citizenship for migrants from Haiti, Cuba, and Nicaragua, while ramping up enforcement at the border. Those changes uh, will probably do nothing more than entice more illegal immigration. Before taking off for Texas, Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas said Abbott was refusing to cooperate with the federal government. We cannot have the rights and the needs of individuals who are seeking humanitarian relief in the United States be exploited for political purposes. Many of the migrants at Sacred Heart in El Paso say they came anticipating the end of Title 42, a Trump-era expulsion policy. And they're in a situation now where they cannot be, but obviously if they go back to their country, they could face harsh consequences or even death. But the Supreme Court halted repeal of the measure until it can hear a lawsuit brought by Republican-led states, including Texas leaving the path ahead unclear. And later this week, a bipartisan delegation of lawmakers will also tour the border, following in President Biden's footsteps. Christina Ruffini, CBS News, the White House. Looking ahead, President Biden has plans to visit Mexico this week, where he'll discuss the border 
and the rising number of fentanyl deaths. Well, now that they've elected a speaker, House Republicans are planning on forming a new select committee to investigate the Department of Justice and the FBI. Lawmakers say they want to target the agencies and their ongoing investigations, particularly those into former President Trump. The new expanded committee proposal is a result of one of the key concessions House Speaker Kevin McCarthy made to his opposition to secure the gavel. The proposal is included in the House Rules Package, which establishes the rules and committees for the 118th Congress and is set to be put up for a vote today. 6.43 on your Monday. Scrape alert this morning. <laughs> yeah, definitely going to need that scraper this uh, morning. It's going to take a little bit of uh, work to get that off the uh, windshield because it's fairly thick. We've had all that low-level moisture in place. That's why we had all the fall or clouds yesterday and now we've got the uh, frost this morning and it's uh, pretty thick so I'll take you a bit of time this morning make sure you clear it all off so you can see your surroundings fog isn't too thick just a little bit of haze currently but that low level moisture kind of trapped near the surface yesterday we were not able to get rid of the low clouds but I think we will today so we should at least see some sunshine it is a chilly start to the morning we're in the lower 20s in Madison but we do have some teens up to the north of course they have a really a lot of snow on the ground in northwestern parts of the state off to our west, there are some clouds. Those will start to increase later this afternoon. That's just a weak system, just clouds, no precipitation with that. So we're kind of stuck in a stagnant weather pattern. But it is going to be milder this afternoon as we see a southerly wind develop. A weak system may produce a little bit of light snow on Thursday and Friday, but right now it does not look like much at all. Most of this is going to stay well to our south. As I mentioned, it is a colder start to the morning while we're at 22 in Madison. You're getting some of these river valleys, single numbers there in Boscobel. Across Stane County, uh, 17 right now in Wanakee, 19 Sun Prairie and Cottage Grove. Stoughton currently 19 as well, allowing that frost to develop. So it'll be chilly this morning, but with the uh, sun expected and that southerly wind, we should be warming through the 30s and getting very close to 40. 40 with that sunshine throughout the morning hours into the afternoon. As I mentioned, not much snow around here, but once you get north of La Crosse up through Eau Claire, over a foot of snow, in fact, over two feet of snow in extreme northwestern Wisconsin around uh, Superior and Ashland. So some pretty good snow depth up there if you want to do some skiing around here. Uh, we're pretty green or pretty brown, I guess, uh, with a lack of snow cover. Looks like above average temperatures are going to continue into much of uh, the weekend into early next week. Temperatures today with that southerly wind and sunshine should be in the mid-30s by the noon hour, so above freezing at that point. And we're going to hold in the 30s this evening. So waking up tomorrow morning, it won't be as cool because of the cloud cover and that southerly wind continuing. 39 today, we'll look at uh, 20, uh, 31 tonight. Some morning fog possibly tomorrow, otherwise some afternoon sun, 37, 39 on Wednesday, and that weak system may produce a snow flurry or some light snow showers, looks like Thursday into Friday. Look at that, 40s into next week, well above average. Thank you, Kelly. 646, time to slow things down and see what's happening in the 608 this morning. We're getting an inside look at the Rock County Legacies exhibit and the latest one, very special to Janesville. Photojournalist Mark Schilling takes us inside. Black Hawk Community Credit Union was born out of the Janesville GM plant in 1965. When the plant closed, the credit union felt a strong need to make sure that the memories of all of this were not lost. A lot of years in there. The exhibit that you will see when you come to visit us was developed by our curator, uh, Kara Kinzelman, put her heart and soul into making sure that this was a high quality exhibit for everyone to come and see. It is all laid out chronologically over a hundred year time frame. The Samson Tractor Company produced some very high quality outputs, but they could not compete from a price perspective. General Motors jumped in and took over uh, the Samson Tractor Company. We have video of part of the sit-down strike that um, occurred. It's very compelling. As somebody that's never been part of a labor union, I found it to be extremely interesting and I have a much greater understanding why it's important. So here we are at the end of the strikes and in the golden years of General Motors in the 1950s. We talk all about families and the generational um, impact that plant had on so many people. A great example would be the, the Glass family here, who from the beginning of operations all the way to the end of operations, there was somebody from this line, family line, that was a part of being employed with the plant. So this is the 100 millionth vehicle ever produced by General Motors for trucks, cars, everything they've ever built, assembled here in Janesville, Wisconsin. My father worked there for 40 years. He loved it. That's all he knew. It was a pride thing for him. This is some of his retirement items and 
some of the tools that he worked with at the plant. I got to go in and out of the plant on numerous occasions. Got to take personal tours with my father. I thought it was amazing. My dad gets to go to this big assembly plant and have fun all day. There is a need for this type of museum in our region here. We've just been receiving so many guests from all over the southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois area that find this really meaningful and really want more of this. So I feel it's really incumbent on us to be able to find these stories, bring this stuff to light, and demonstrate that we are the storytellers of the future. This exhibit was put together to honor the workers of GM, JATCO, UAW, and I think we've done it very well. So one of the aspects of the project they're working to grow to maintain the legacy are actual audio recordings. They have an oral history program set up where people are invited to come in, give their first stand experience or that of a loved one that worked at the plant. You can simply call and make an appointment to meet with staff at Rock County Historical Society or they'll come right to you. We'll have all of this up on channel3000.com. That's got to make for one compelling display once they gather all of these recordings and display it for the public. Uh, just to hear that guy talk about what, it, what going to the plant meant when he was a kid, seeing his dad, uh, that had me glued. And it takes everyone to be able to come together to make this the story, right? Yeah. Like, it takes all that. So it's pretty cool that they're opening this up to the community. It's so important to that community. And if you don't record and document those stories, you don't want to risk losing that stuff forever. Especially for, like, generations to come, yeah. you know, for the kids and their kids of these folks that have worked there. Such an important story to tell. Thanks, Josh. You bet. He's always looking for ideas for In the 608. Reach out to him on social media or email him for a chance to be featured. 649 right now coming up in the morning sprint, the special send off for J.J. Watt as he officially retires. If you have a little kiddo turning three soon, let us know so we can share their picture on TV. We'll be right back. Sponsored by Three Bears Resort, Indoor Water Park and Conference Center in Warrens, Wisconsin. Hi, I'm Dr. Aaron Schwab, General Surgeon at Stoughton Health. If you suffer from bothersome or painful spider veins or varicose veins, please join us for our upcoming seminar where you can learn what new procedures may be able to help you. Wisconsin, it's easy to take for granted how we warm up, but what if you couldn't warm up so easily? For many, it's a reality they can't ignore. Working families, elderly, disabled and veterans struggling to keep their heat and power on in the dangerous cold of winter. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, our energy, water, and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safe in your home. No one deserves to suffer when we can help each other. All these two for seven bucks every day. That big crispy boy can barely fit on the bun. Two of those things for just seven bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. Enjoy the benefits of soft water with Menard's great selection of Morton water softeners. Morton's demand control Wi-Fi water softener is a smarter way to manage your water. Integrated Wi-Fi capabilities allow you to monitor your salt levels and water usage from your smartphone, putting you in control while at home or away. Plus, Morton's look-ahead technology learns and predicts your water needs, saving you money. Save big money on Morton water softeners now at Menard's. Save big money at Menard's. financial planning tools can help you reach them. That's the value of ownership. Madison Magazine's Winter Restaurant Week is here. Participating restaurants will provide three course meals starting at $30. Some restaurants will offer a lunch menu for $20, featuring wine and more. Check out our guide to Restaurant Week to see which restaurants are offering takeout as well as dine-in. Visit madisonrestaurantweek.com. Mark your calendars for January 22nd through the 27th. Presenting sponsor, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund, and supporting sponsor, Bergstrom Madison Chevrolet and Cadillac. It's easy to say things. Anyone can do that. Look closer. Meaning what you say, that's a little harder. And a little harder to find. But at US Cellular, when we say you get unlimited data for $29.99 per line, we don't mean only if you get four lines. We mean $29.99 per line, even one. Plus, every plan is price protected for every customer. 
If you suffer from bothersome spider veins or painful varicose veins, please contact us at Stoughton Health to learn about what new procedures may be able to help you. Stoughton Health, creating excellence together. Watch News 3 Now at 6 with Eric, Charlotte, Gary, and Zach. Weeknights. It is 6.53, time for the morning sprint. We start with that breaking news from overnight. We know multiple fire crews have been at a large garbage collection plant in Walworth County. It's happening at John's Disposal Services just outside of Whitewater. Crews have been on scene for a few hours. Because of the fire, there has been a stretch of Highway U shut down between Fremont and Highway D. We have a crew headed there right now, and we'll bring you more information as soon as there's something to report. Aaron Rodgers teasing the possibility of retirement after a 16 to 20 loss to the Detroit Lions. Rodgers refusing to swap jerseys with Lions receiver Jamison Williams and said, I'm holding on to this one. That comment fueled speculation that this may have been Rodgers last game. You can find continuing coverage and hear from Rodgers on channel 3000.com. After 12 years and 114 and a half sacks, Cardinals JJ Watt has retired the former Badger uh, had his last game against the San Francisco 49ers last night, uh, though the game uh, ended up for a loss, uh, as a loss uh, for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, it was really an emotional send-off. Uh, his wife, uh, family was there, and you saw him get choked up as he walked off the field. What an outstanding career for the former Badger. The Madison Metropolitan School District opening an emergency enrollment center. This center is for students displaced after one city schools announced it was ending ninth and 10th grade operations due to staffing shortages. MMSD Superintendent Dr. Carlton Jenkins said that the announcement was unexpected, but MMSD is committed to providing support to affected families. Well, there's another run on Mega Millions tickets after no one won Friday, so the new jackpot is up to $1.1 billion. Uh, there was a winning ticket sold in Luck, Wisconsin for $15.1 million last week at the Wayne's Foods in Luck. So far, the winner has not gone public. The next drawing for the Mega Millions is tomorrow night. Lucky in Luck. Kevin McCarthy of California has received 216 votes after 15 ballots to become Speaker of the House. Just after midnight Friday, McCarthy claiming the gavel amid infighting in his own party. He said that it took longer than he thought, but he wants the country to know he will never give up. More than 7,000 nurses in New York City are set to strike this morning if they don't reach an agreement. Uh, with their union, uh, they did not get one over the weekend. Nurses were offered a 19% increase, but similar to the rail strike, the issue is not only about money, it comes down to staffing and reasonable time off. For the first time in three years, China has opened its borders. The first international flights of the new era landed yesterday. At the same time, a wave of destinations are imposing travel restrictions on travelers from China. Portugal is the latest to join the list, requiring a negative COVID test for air passengers. All right, we've seen uh, some light fog develop this morning. More importantly, that's freezing on your windshield, your cars. So you're going to have to scrape that off this morning. We've got that low-level moisture. But I think we will see some sun for a change as temperatures climb into the upper 30s. This afternoon looks like a pretty nice uh, forecast. Really, the next few days, maybe a little bit of fog tomorrow morning. Upper 30s, weak system, maybe a flurry of light snow shower Thursday night into Friday. But yeah, low 40s next week. All right, thank you so much for joining us. More on that breaking news, industrial fire in Whitewater at 726.